Hello, 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 this is Rich Kale here on YouTube. It's Gen X Elsewhere, and it's time to return to Victorian England and help Sherlock solve the cases in Sherlock Holmes' Crimes and Punishments. Now, <clears throat> we left off, we had just started the Kew Gardens drama. And we were about to go perform an autopsy. Uh, see, I gotta talk to the police. Let's see. Mr. Holmes? Yes. It's ready for autopsy then. Okay, so, um. Uh, the duty cop, Mr. Holmes. Or is this the duty cop? A very good day to you, my friend. Ah. Is Inspector Lestrade in? I'm sorry, sir, but the inspector's absent at the moment. Hmm, that's curious. However, let's go do the autopsy. Staff room. Evidence room. Alright, so let's see. Ah, yes, let's go to the evidence room first. Ah, here we go. Mr. Dunn's belongings. Okay. This watch is of great value. Yes, it is. What's this? A oh, pen. A beautiful feather pen of a good make. Oh, we call that a fountain pen now. Oh, a letter. Letter to Mr. Wayne. To Mr. F. Wayne, director of Wayne & Sons Printing Company. My friend, your posters for the great exhibition at Kew Gardens are very beautiful, but it is surely unnecessary to mention all of the staff. My name alone will be sufficient. Hmm. Curious. Now let's look at this club card. Hmm. Ah! A membership card for the London Crest Club. Curious. Okay. And now we must go to the morgue and perform an autopsy. I'm sure Watson will join us down here in a minute. Alright. First of all, let us carry out an external examination. Mm, very well, very well. Let's see. There is an injury to the skull, most probably caused by the fall in the water lily greenhouse. Yeah. The vessels and the pupil of the eye appear quite normal. Hmm. The air from the lungs carries a faint floral aroma. Hmm. Curious. Okay. There are no suspicious marks upon the chest. Let us finish our external examination so that we can proceed with the autopsy. All right. No redness, stings, or bruises. Hmm. Nothing there. Nothing suspicious here. That is curious. Now, let us examine the internal organs. Okay. The heart's blood vessels show no pathological signs. Mm hmm. And the tissue? The heart tissue shows okay. no visible pathological signs. Hmm. Let's look at the lungs. The lungs are congested and edematous. Hmm. Oh, hello, what's this? The tissue on the inferior lobe of the right lung is damaged. Most probably caused by toxins from an unknown plant. Hmm. 
Okay, let's check the stomach out here. The stomach, the stomach tissues show no visible pathological signs. Hmm. There, there is, is a small, small amount of content. It appears that he breakfasted lightly, only a short while before, before his death. death. Curious. Let's check the liver. The liver, liver is enlarged. It would seem that he was suffering from an alcohol addiction. Mm. The liver is brown. There are, there are no, no visible pathological signs. signs. Hmm. Let's check the stomach. Let's check the stomach. Let's check the Director, director, director of two gardens, gardens died, died from, from poisoning. poisoning. Plant, Plant poisoning, poisoning is more exact. exact. Oh. You mean, mean? Yes. yes. It, it is murder. murder. We should inform Lestrade. Yes, yes but, but do, do remember, remember once and I discovered the murder. murder. The, the challenge, challenge is mine. <laughs> <The challenge. laughs> we need to locate that dead blunt. blunt. Such, Such a perfect murder, murder appeals to me. me. Murder, murder may be appeal to you. Is that all we need to do? No. We also the have the people working, working at Hugh Gardens, Gardens Martin, Martin Hamish, Hamish, and the son of the victim, Albert Dunn. Mm. And also Miss White, of whom we spoke to Mr. Hamish. Should we bring the war order for interrogation? No. Pardon. A few innocuous questions at Kew will suffice, as well as a discreet delve, delve into, into their, their personal, personal affairs. affairs. Yes, Watson. It is time now to open the doors. <laughs> Even though there's no start building, I, I suppose that is necessary. Yeah. We should also be concerned with the victim himself. After all, we don't know very much about Montague Dunn. No, we don't. You're enjoying this already, aren't you? <laughs> More than a little. <laughs> okay. So now, it's time to find his killer. Been... So we'll have to search the archives eventually, I think. But for now, let's just go back to Kew Gardens. So I don't know if we have... We have new points, but I don't know if they're going to give us anything yet. Let's look at him. Don was trapped in poisoning, so... That'll probably give us a fact, but I don't think it's going to give us enough at this moment. Okay. Now. Ah. Okay. Director's office, cloakroom, and laboratory. Nursery. Yeah, that's the nursery. Seed, Seed house. house. Ventilation system. Hmm. Colonial collection. Water lily greenhouse. Mm-hmm. Dry tropics. Palm house. All right. We have examined the whole thing. Noting everything. Oh. Reserve. Allowing us to be able, I guess, to maneuver between places now. Okay. Okay. Let's check the door. Locked. It's locked. Ah. Let's talk with Mr. Amich. Well, let's mention that room being empty. Mr. Hamish, can you explain to us what happened to the Colonial Collection? It seems somewhat depleted. But, uh... Oh, most likely maintenance work, tidying up. You're mm. not sure, then? But you're the deputy director. Well, I am busy. I cannot be everywhere at once. Mm. 
Albert told us about the tragic death of Mr. Dunn, the late director of Kew Gardens. Yes. Tragic indeed. His heart attack was quite unexpected. Hmm. As deputy director, how was your relationship with Montague? Yes. Now? To be honest with you, Mr. Holmes, it could have been better. You see, every Tuesday he would carry out his inspection of the gardens, but it was solely to make an impression, great pretense that he cared at all. He would give out absurd orders, ignoring anyone else's opinion. He would then disappear for the rest of the week. He was what some mm. might call a man of action. I'd say rather he was overzealous and chaotic. So after all, it was no wonder, perhaps, that he ended up like that. If you take into consideration his kind of lifestyle. Hmm. You mentioned that Mr. Dunn led a particular lifestyle. Well, it's no secret that he enjoyed, uh, celebrating, shall we say? Hmm. He was a member of the London Smart Set. He was famous for it. That and... And... He had an eye for the ladies, to put it mildly, Mr. Holmes. Hmm. Mr. Hamish, can you tell us who holds the keys to the locked greenhouses? That would be Albert, Mr. Dunn's son. Yes, Albert keeps all the keys, and one can only imagine why. Hmm. What do you mean? Well, he was never interested in Kew Gardens before. And now, all of a sudden, he is trying to act as if he owns the place. I think he wants to take over the management here. <laughs> He'd do better to leave that to me. He has no experience. No, none at all. Hmm. You tell me, Mr. Hamish, do you grow the more deadly variety of plant here? You mean insectivorous? Yes, but nothing larger than that. Hmm. Well, let's check him out now. Okay. My well, I'm making expensive glasses. Hmm. Watch. Oh! Dirty collar! Ooh, dirty clothes. Well, I guess that's to be expected working here. He's not married. And he's got gardener's hands. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. So, if you look at his portrait in here... Oh, we have four people who are going to meet in this. Unmarried. Incorrectly. He's very plain. He works hard to the point of neglect of his... Ah. Uh. Hmm. Can I help you, gentlemen? Ah. There is Albert, I believe. Who is Miss Margaret White? Hmm. Ah, she is the young lady who studies with me. She visits here sometimes to help out with the greenhouses. Huh. In fact, she should be here today. She wanted to work at the seed house. That's the small greenhouse across from the large glass house. His eyes are red. Hmm. Uh, do you work here? Yes, but part-time only. For I'm also studying botany at the University of London. Hmm. You're following in your father's footsteps, then that is commendable. Well, even if botany is not my strongest suit, there are people who say that I could be a good manager. Hmm. We noticed that a part of the colonial collection has been cleared. Yes. Oh, at the moment, I'm just dealing with the storage room. I don't know much about the other rooms. Hmm. I imagine that your relationship with your father may have been a strained one. Yes. I cannot say that he was a kind man. 
for he never listened to me at all. Hmm. He forced me to work here. But now, oh. after his death, I've been pondering it over. Perhaps he wasn't so wrong about me after all. I have hmm. to follow his path, and I have to manage Kew Gardens. And I can do it. I can be as good as any other who works here. Hmm. Would you please tell us about Martin Hamish, the deputy director? Well, I have to tell you that Mr. Hamish is not and has never been the deputy director of Kew Gardens. My father would not have tolerated it. Huh. Indeed. Well, that is most interesting. He told us that he was. Yeah. Yes, because he believes that the management should be passed down to him now that my father is dead. But in actual fact, Mr. Hamish only has the honor of being the garden's longest serving employee. In fact, if we are to think logically at all, it should be me who takes over the management of Kew Gardens. Do you not have a good relationship with Mr. Hamish? Mm. I suppose so. But we have very little in common. Mr. Hamish loves his plants and Kew Gardens, and I cannot say that I share his passion. I see. And how was his relationship with your father? Yeah. Oh, he hated my father. It was obvious. He would be furious whenever my father boasted of Kew Gardens in the newspapers or at conferences. He was convinced that my father was stealing all of the credit for himself. But my father treated Mr. Hamish in the same way as he treated anyone. Dismissively. With indifference. Hmm. That makes sense. Do you hold the keys to all of these locked doors? Yes, you can have them. But I cannot give you the keys to the cloakroom. The employee's effects are private. I am sure you understand. Of course, yes. That doesn't mean we won't uh, find a way in. All right, let's check him out. His eyes are definitely red. Red eyes, left recently, consumed by grief, yes. That makes sense. Oh, shaving cut. Hmm. Clean hands. Hmm, that's curious. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Sure, he says the hands are clean. Let's see. A task list for Albert, compiled by Martin Hamish. Sweep out the palm house, scrub mm -hmm. the toilets, clean the storage shed tools. Hmm. Curious, curious. Yeah, we don't need to be in here yet. Watson! Yo, Watson, move. Get your butt out of the way. Thank you. We went to the wrong door. Ugh, Watson! Okay, Watson, get over here. Thank you, Watson. Oh, come on, Mr. Watson! All right. Let's see if we get in Dunn's office now. Left building. Okay. There we go. Oh, this is an office. All right. We're in an office now. All righty. Oh, the director's safe. Mm hmm. Hmm. Ah. This is one of those puzzles. Okay. So we gotta remember, we gotta get all these up, but you make a wrong move and they all collapse. So we got two, then two, then three, 
and then three. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Something tells me I'm going to have to rotate it and do the five. Yep. That was it. That's clever. That was clever. I like that one. Okay. All right. Let's uh, read these notes here. Let's look at this stuff here. Hmm. Letter. Letter of complaint. Letter. Okay. Start with this one on the bottom. I suggest that we don't tell Miss Margaret White about this document. No. Debt of Miss Margaret White to Mr. Robert to Mr. Montague Dunn. Rental of a suite of rooms at Oxford Street. Mm. Educational scholarship at the Law London Cons University. Credits opened at Hamilton. Radigan House, Taylor, and at Bay Bayard and Son Luxury Jewel. Mm. That's curious. Okay, a letter of complaint. Mr. Dunn, we must ask you for the last time for the return of our dear sisters. You do not have any right to hold them imprisoned. They do not belong to you. you so, your so-called permissions are wholly false. You are hiding behind lies, the lie we need not elaborate, that was reported in the press as the case of June 14, 1889. What you have done is quite abhorrent. Be very sure that we shall never abandon our family. We trust you. We trusted you and regretted having done so. The Divine Syndicate. Ooh, that's uh, not good. Lawyer, help. My dear friend, please allow me to express my disappointment upon reading your last letter. I am paying you to defend me, not to accuse me. Kew Gardens is a royal institution. We are granted the great opportunity to travel the world and to save the most extraordinary, pre extraordinarily precious and rare species of plant. Our duty is to protect such species and from those who might wish to use them for dubious purpose. This divine syndicate of whom you speak have no right to hold such precious plants. Remember the case of June 14, 1889. So I must respectfully ask you once again to notarize the permissions of these plants on behalf of Kew Garden. Hmm. The documents were sent to you on Monday. P.S. See you in Boodles on Tuesday as always. Montague Dunn. Curious. Okay, hmm. let's uh, check some things out. Let's see, champagne, interesting. But there's something else here, isn't there? Let's see, anything here? What's this? No? Let's see. Let's see what's this here. No, nothing here. Oh, a photo there. What's this? A photograph of Montague Dunn and Reynold Hamish. Hmm. Reynold Hamish. Hmm. All right, let's check out the desk, Holmes. <clears throat> There we go. Newspapers uh. discussing Kew Gardens. Mm-hmm. Ah, new plant species. The Kew Gardens team are pleased to announce the successful production of a new variety of barley, one that retains a complete resistance to the cold. They have named it the Siberian Barley. Mr. Martin Hamish, the proud cultivator of the graft, will hold a press conference next Monday morning upon this very subject. Hmm. It's a letter. My dearest Margaret, following our last conversation, I believe it might be better if you vacate your position here at Kew Gardens. As you pointed out quite bluntly, you are no longer in need of my support. You are quite able to stand up for yourself in the world, as you say. Well, I give you back your freedom and wish you nothing but good luck. 
Uh, so you wanted to fire her. Hmm. And what's this? Champagne. Champagne. Montague Dunn had good taste. Hmm. French wine. A remarkable vintage. Hmm. Curious. All right. All right. Let's uh, go over and check this door now. Ah, very good. Uh-oh, something in here. Let's see. Oh, there's a phonograph here. A phonograph used for voice recording. Remarkable. Yes, this is quite a modern laboratory. Yes. I actually saw one of these. We had one in the attic of our home. And... Martin Hamish. Hmm. Let's uh, listen to this one. Anything. I don't. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Very, very curious. I like that. Okay, let's check the chemistry cupboard. Chemicals. A sufficient quantity for some serious experiments. Indeed. All right. University book, huh? Let's check that out. University A of botany Cambridge. book. Oh! Repeat this here. student's book belongs to Albert. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think he mentioned that one. Now let's check. Uh... Now let's do a deep. In oh, hello. There's something there. There was a bottle here. It left behind a trace of the substance mm. that pervaded the laboratory. Several drops of the substance were spilled. Someone carried this bottle around. Indeed. What we got here? Gold! Dust. Good heavens. What's it doing here? The gold is almost immune to chemical attacks, so it may be a valuable auxiliary for various experiments. Oh. But why would anyone perform such experiments in a botanical garden? Ah, that's weird. What we got? Several drops of the substance were spilled. Someone carried this bottle around. The bottle is no longer here, but it is possible to detect a faint scent. But we need a good nose. <gasps> Ooh. We're gonna need Toby. <laughs> I like Toby. <laughs> uh, I guess I get a little too excited that we're going to have uh, have a Toby moment in this case. Uh, Alright, let's see the cat. Let's see here. Protective equipment. Hmm. It appears as though the protective equipment is missing from here. Alrighty. Gloves. Waterproof aprons. Everything one might need for self-protection. Mm. Do they grow dangerous plants here? 
Well, it would make sense. Now we have an empty place, and we have the protective. Interesting. Such masks are generally worn when dealing with toxic chemicals. Hmm. Okay. Well, now we check the cloakroom. Locked. Holmes, Albert Dunn didn't give us the key to this door. It does not matter. We will open it. Yep. Time to pick the fudge. Is this? Okay. Ah, of course. There we go. Okay, that one's a little Open. trickier. Uh, so, what should I do now, people? Okay, I'm going to go in here. And let's see, can we finish? All right, we're going to check out things in here. And then, you know what? Let us save this for the next time. We will remember we have to do this next time. But we will leave the office for now. Or maybe not. Let's let's at least finish that so we have some items done. Uh, we're over in a half hour, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, first, let's check Mr. Hamish's locker. Martin Hamish's locker. Mm-hmm. A review on rare and exotic plants. Hmm. Martin Hamish has written several pieces. Indeed. A letter. Let's see, Mr. General Secretary, he's invented holding a Q guard and obliging me to renew my application for the management position. As I have stated already in my previous letters, I believe that no one is better suited for the post. While Mr. Montague Dunn was alive, I understood your reservation to my suggestion. Your reasons were political, and so I was happy to comply. But now the Kew Gardens lie in disorder. How can I stand by and allow it? How can I leave them in the hands of an inexperienced people with no motivation? I must urge you to cast your decision as a matter of urgency so that I may devote myself entirely to the noble task ahead and free my mind of this uncertainty. Okay. Martin Hamish studied chemistry. Interesting. Yes, that's interesting, too. And let's see. That's a picture there. Father, Father and I. And I. Q Gardens. Gardens. Hmm. All right. Let's check a look at Albert Dunn's. Albert's locker. Hmm. There's something in here too. Oh, miniature ship. Oh, here's a letter. A rejection letter from the British Royal Naval College. Oh. 
Sir, it is to my regret to it is my regret to inform you that despite your excellent results with our entry examinations, we are unable to invite you to the Royal Navy School. Your father, Mr. Montague Dunn, has expressed his intention to entrust to you the directorship of the Royal Botanical Gardens in Kew, and it is clear that he would not release you for an entire year of naval training. Please accept all our best wishes for your future at Kew Gardens. Huh. That's curious. Specialist articles on shipyards and ship construction. Albert Dunn has a great passion for shipbuilding and the sea. So he doesn't want to be here. Mm, but there's something else. There's something. Hello! Young Albert, standing with a woman in front of London University. Hmm. Curious. All right, let's take a look at the last locker, Miss White's locker. Miss White's locker. Hmm. Apparently, Miss White is a capable student. Yes. And we got two letters here. Let's see what this one is. Dear Margaret, I know how your financial troubles are overwhelming you at the present time. Please let me reassure you that I could not permit you to remain in such a dilemma. I was born of a wealthy family. I would consider it an honor if you might accept my help. Your devoted servant, Albert. Oh, interesting. And let's see what this is. A draft of the letter that Miss White sent to her parents. Ah. Mother and father, I'm writing this letter with reluctance to ask you ask for your help. My studies and my housing costs have proven to be more expensive than I had anticipated. I fear, therefore, that I may not be able to manage it in the long term. I know that we've had our disagreements in the past, but would you be so heartless as to allow your daughter to fail her studies due to lack of money? Uh-huh. Hmm. A vanity purse. It is of high quality. Yes, it is. Hello. Margaret, we were surprised to receive your letter. How could you think to ask us for money after all of these years that have passed since you left and without any thought of us? You have never shared with us any detail of your success at the university, but you choose to do so now? We suppose you must be ashamed of us, for we are not from the same high class as your new friends. Yes, we are modest people, but you should learn to put your family first as we at home have always done, and none of us ever compromise their reputation as it appears you have already with your employer, Mr. Dunn. No, Margaret, it is you who makes us feel ashamed, your parents. Uh -oh. Alright. Let's uh, examine this music box. Okay. Open. Alright. Oh. These jewels must be worth a small fortune. Okay, and that pretty much sums up everything in here. So, let's... Good. Let us leave this room, and we will call it an episode here. And next time around, we're going to go inspect the nursery and move on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little travel to Baker Street, and we'll come back here. And next time, we will investigate other things at the Botanical Gardens. As always, I am Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Gen X elsewhere. I invite you to subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other Sherlock Holmes games I've played. I've played Sherlock Holmes vs. Jack the Ripper and uh, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes for uh, The Awaken. I am also working my way through other games. I am working my way through Alien Isolation. Very fun, very uh, scary game. I am been working my way through several games from LucasArts, which includes... And I'm about to start on the current, uh, I believe, Escape from Monkey Island, which is the fourth game in the series. I am also working through several games with Call of Cthulhu in the title. Uh, currently, I am working on uh, Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. I also do a series of runs through the game of Monstrum, and I'm working my way through the Mist franchise, currently working on Uru, which is set between Mist 4 and Mist 5. 
I am also working my way through some Sierra games, currently working on Gabriel Knight 2, which I should soon be finishing, and I'm also playing uh, the Doom franchise from the point of view of the one, pr one protagonist, the same protagonist, and I'm currently working on Final Doom right now. As always, take care, have a good one, and goodbye.